when you get a new fish, the employees at the pet store tell you to float the bag in water for a few minutes and then pour in a little bit of water from your tank, just a cupful, so that your fish learns how to adjust. Yeah, I never had that luxury. You see, when the stock market crashed, we came here. We didn't lose our house, my dad didn't lose his job, but I was 10. It felt like I was losing everything else in the world that mattered. The little pond across the street where the deer played in the fall and the blackbirds sang in spring and we'd go frog catching every summer and we'd never succeed once, but it was okay. That diner in the neighborhood that made the best breadsticks, the friends that I didn't think I'd ever have to leave again after moving from coast to coast, city to city, state to state, it was getting old, but I was wrong. You'll make new friends. You're gonna learn to love the Philippines. It's where the whole family is. And yeah, that was true. That was maybe the truest thing my parents had said to me for the whole year, but I reiterate, I was 10. I left home in the first trimester of the fifth grade, and I arrived in Manila in the middle of the fourth quarter. That was four months of my life lost in the span of two weeks. I don't talk about sixth grade. I skipped seventh grade. I came back to Bacolod, the place where I was born, so by default, the closest I was getting to home, right? In my first year of high school, I bought a parakeet. This tiny gray winged thing with feathers like spider's silk, and they sold him to me as a lovebird. I knew that wasn't what he was, but I, that didn't stop me from naming him Fish when I couldn't think of anything better. The poor thing must have been so confused, but at least it meant neither of us were alone. I still hadn't adopted their language, their dialect. I'd only picked up bits and pieces of it from my parents in the kitchen or when my grandma would leave the TV on whenever she'd come to visit. And I stashed those bits and pieces away like bottle caps. You never really know what to do with bottle caps. You know that they're pretty. You want to keep them. So I stashed them away like, a, like they were in a little pencil box. And I showed them to my friends whenever they'd come over. I wanted to impress them. But now, when I tried doing that, it didn't work. Everyone else had the exact same ones and more. And what's worse, mine were bent around the edges. They were, they were rusty. I was saying ah instead of ah. My accent was on the wrong syllable. I could understand the words fine, but every time I tried to speak them, I would end up dropping them all over the floor. And as I crouched down to pick them up, hoping they wouldn't be even more dented than they were when I started, I tried to make myself as small as possible under the sounds of people laughing. I gave up. I put the bottle caps back in their little box and I shut it in a drawer in my room. And that was when people started asking me, hey, why haven't you learned how to speak Ilongo yet? But I didn't really care. It wasn't, it wasn't my tongue. I spoke in English. I thought in English. I dreamt in English. It was just how I was wired. For the last nine years, I had been as American as Monday Night Football. I had plenty of time to rediscover the Filipino that I was. We'd established I wasn't going anywhere fast. But then they moved from laughing at my Ilongo to laughing at my accent and just playing the way I talked. I've never been one of those people who looks in the mirror and hates what he sees. But now I knew what it felt like when I walked up the stairs to fifth period, past the words, speak English, painted on the wall. But whenever I actually did so, there were always at least three people holding a finger up to their faces to try and stop an imaginary nosebleed. This was 2010. It was the age of Lady Gaga and Katy Perry, and everyone was walking around, singing their songs, talking about how great it was. They were so unafraid. They were so willing to be weird. But I guess I just wasn't the right kind of weird for them. My words didn't feel like mine anymore. I put off joining the school paper because I didn't feel like my voice was good enough. I didn't feel like I still had much of a voice. I was as lost as my little bird, born a parakeet, raised a lovebird, called a fish. And when I found my voice again, I realized that what I had to say was so much more important than how I said it. I talk weird, I talk fast, but at least I talk. And I didn't expect it then that people would actually start to listen to me. So, 
Thank you.